Well, we have Carol Baum, the producer that nobody oh, ever knew, really, um, you know, before she started talking smack about Sydney Sweeney, now apologizing, talking to I TMZ, saying, you know, I probably shouldn't said shouldn't have said those things about Sydney Sweeney, saying, I don't get her. She's ugly. She's not a good actress. Why is she Hollywood's it girl right now in a public forum? So she's had to walk that back. Yep, absolutely. Yep, which she should. Um, we have been talking about how we just don't want this to be going on behind the scenes in Hollywood. You know what I mean? Like, it's just not something that we we just what, hope in our heart of hearts that other producers aren't judging actresses in this way or actors. You hope against this is a blind item podcast. People are talking all sorts of crazy things behind the scenes. Yeah, Dawn. I don't want them to be judging people based on their looks. To no, get parts of course not, but they do. Relevant. And that's the sad thing. She, she said it out loud and she's being roundly criticized for it, which she absolutely should. But there are a lot of people probably wagging their finger at her that's that have right. probably said things behind the scenes. Yeah. that perhaps they would not want. Yeah, they're just fading into the bushes right now. Yeah, exactly. Oh, boy. Well, Mike, do you have any blind items? Uh, nope, none. Okay. Sorry. Good. Sorry. It's been a great because show. Because I yeah. have other things to do. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. We got some. Let's do it here. Doing the uh, little blind items today. We're going to start things off with an A-list director. Doesn't want to go back on his word, so he wants a project that will be like three or four parts, which is why he dropped the original plan for his next project. Oh. Um, it's Quentin James Tarantino. Gunn? Yeah, you oh, got it. Quentin. That's, yeah, straight yes. forward there. Of course, he was uh, rumored to be making The Movie Critic as his final film. According to the blind items, though, he is going to have a final film, but it's not going to be that project because he wants something that's going to break down and be like three or four parts. So yeah. really, it's like his last Dude. four projects rather than just one. Which is totally he predictable, just, right? You just don't want to quit doing yeah. it. A long time ago, you said, I'm only doing 10 films. And now you don't want to do that. So just do more films. Yeah, but he's... This is the height of Hollywood directorness, though, right? To sort of change... Or narcissism. The, to change the universe, <laughs> the universe in his own image, which is to say, I'm going to do 10 films... Yeah. Spoiler alert, the 10th film is actually four. So, and so to think that somehow, you know, that's going to make us all go, wow. Yeah. Instead of, oh, dude, you're just doing four more films. It's fine. It's fine. It's okay. We like your work, some of it. And, you know, <laughs> for the most part, we want to see you around more. But I think he wants that like, oh, no, it's his last film. Uh, what are we going to do? Yeah. Good luck to him. Come on, I don't know. Man. I, I'm not a big fan of his films mm. anyway. So. Yeah. Good luck to him. But there was also something about Brad Pitt. Was Brad Pitt involved in this project? Yeah, he was going to be the role of the movie critic. Yeah, got it. That was going to be Brad Pitt. And I think it was like going to also possibly be from the same universe as um, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood because mm. it's kind of like oh, well, the 20 ish years to later. Going. Yeah, sort of okay. thing. Although Brad Pitt was in that previous universe. So I don't know. Hmm. But that would just make it, you know, yeah. that much more fascinating, apparently. <sighs> And he likes to do 70s stuff. Mm -hmm. Who doesn't? <laughs> I mean, if you lived in the 70s, you know. Yeah. All right. You guys got that one. Let's do another one here as we're uh, doing some blind items today. Uh, first few, I'm not going to say them toughest but we're gonna see how we can do th okay. through them uh at this point the streamer is just throwing anything at the wall they know they're never gonna get their investment back it was a terrible investment with the a-list couple and that couple doesn't care we've seen through previous deals they just take the money that people are handing out and put no effort in what they're doing bradley Want to take this one? <laughs> That's Harry and Meghan. Yes, it is. There and you go. And Netflix. Of course, Netflix, the deal there. We found out a couple of new projects that are coming uh, the way of uh, the Sussexes. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, at this point, it sounds like from this blind item that Netflix is just going to continue to throw whatever they can at the wall, including a show all about the world of polo. Yeah, no one cares. I don't know. Nobody cares about that, Mike. Okay, Carol. Do you care? No, I definitely don't care about it. No. Yeah, Come I on, think Carol. the average person that's watching Netflix isn't I, immensely interested I in I don't polo. disagree with you, but the mark of a good storyteller is somebody who can take a subject and make you fascinated by it. I'm not saying they will. I'm just saying they have a chance. And if they don't, then we are all going to be just like, you guys, why were you spending all this money on what? Right? Yeah. So I think, I think the jury's a little bit out, but I too noted non-fan 
of the game of polo, Mike. I will say Netflix has found a way to fascinate the general public on Formula One racing, yeah. sure. golf, mm-hmm. Which, and NASCAR on. with three series that actually have been very good and have really captivated the general public. So if they can find a way to do that with yeah. polo, I'm more power to them. I think the problem with polo is that people don't have access to polo, you know, so it's more of an elitist thing. So people have access to NASCAR. Not to Formula One, though. Like or really Formula in this One. in this yeah. country, really, really didn't until the yeah. popularity yeah. around the next Netflix show. And yeah. then now everybody's watching it. Yeah, again, they'll, the have their sh- they'll have their chance. Yeah. I just I'm just saying, like, if they don't succeed mm-hmm. in telling a good story or producing something that gets people talking, then I think people really will begin to question why Netflix spent all this money. What did they see that the rest of the audience didn't? And it's not to like unnecessarily hate on like a lot of the media does on uh, most days about Harry and Meghan yeah. for obvious reasons, which are too long to go into on this uh, podcast. There's a lot of racism, sexism, and uh, you know, whatever. Um, but uh, where was I going? It's just to say like, I get that, that there are criticisms of them. I'm not here even for that. I'm just saying like, I think it's okay to question why Netflix spent all that money. What did they see? that we Mm -hmm. didn't seem to understand about their ability to produce great content. Yeah. If the show. Mm -hmm. But they have really been behind them because when their Spotify, uh, Spotify, Spotify deal went through, they were like, there's nothing wrong with them. We love them and we we are backing them. Yeah. Yeah, Which is fine. If they saw something, Mm -hmm. let's hope Mm -hmm. they did. Yeah. And I would like my jam, Megan. I would like a show on her making jam. (laughs) Well, I want her jam. I want a jar. Yeah. Send it my way. Okay. Bradley wants some jam and I will eat a spoonful. Yes. Let's we're just jealous. We want jam. Yeah. Bradley makes article. his own jam, if you don't know. I know, by but the I want to know but... how she makes like I have questions. See? Yeah, you yeah. want a show about jam. Yeah. yeah. Let's do another one here. Uh let's move on to the A plus lister. They knew exactly what they were doing with the timing. There are rumblings that a part of the deal for her to show up at the festival last weekend. <laughs> was going to include a surprise performance this weekend with her A-list close friend. Oh, so Alana Del Rey, Taylor Swift combo at Coachella. Two days after an album release. Oh, no. Oh. Ooh, I like this rumor. Just saying, this is a rumor that's floating around the world right now. Blind Items, of course, she doesn't do anything by accident. Her album mm-hmm. is coming out tomorrow. Well, this midnight tonight basically her Mm -hmm. album is coming out and uh there's a lot of rumors and rumblings that uh you know because there were also talk that she got paid millions just to show up last weekend yeah and they were saying their ticket sales were a problem whatever you're paying someone millions i wouldn't be surprised if there was you know a couple songs thrown in that mix too quid pro so yes I mean, why not? Mm-hmm. I I think it's, I don't even think that seems very conspiratorial or like, sure. you know, super far-fetched. It seems very likely and plausible. I think so too. I think it's smart also because everyone will be talking about it, which I mean, you saw the power of Coachella as a social media amplification vacation machine or however you want to describe it right like i mean you had people like or at least the appearance of that because you had people like will smith you had yeah. you know gwen stefani like everybody just wants you know the media mentions that come out of them being on stage oh yeah definitely and, and also the influencers yeah and- the influencers it's the best place for them and then celebrities that you know i've obsessively clicked through the tmz a photo album of Coachella and I just go, I don't know her. I don't know her. I don't know her. And then I'm like, wait a minute. And then I will Google people and go, she kind of looks like that girl in that one thing. So it definitely works for influencers and people that aren't top of mind celebrities are old like us. (laughs) Well, (laughs) I don't think it's because I'm old. I just think it's because they're, you know, when you get to a certain age though, you really do stop absorbing new music. Oh, sure. New music for sure. So I'm just saying like the artists that we don't read, there are so many artists after like oh after God. the age of 40. I'm like, I don't know who these people are. And you do have to actively search them out. Oh, yeah. I mean, even here in our own town at First Avenue, a famous venue, I get an email from them and I'm like, I, I don't know any of these bands yeah. or people. 
<laughs> I'm wearing a Three's Company t-shirt. Yeah. So. <laughs> Mike's wearing, wearing ACDC. And I'm wearing old, old Taylor Swift merch from like 15 years ago. Yeah, we're all jealous, old. Mike. That we're all old, yeah. No, that she's wearing Taylor Swift merch no, and you're not. Okay. It's all good. All right. I don't think he would look good in this. It's an off-the-shoulder sweatshirt. I think Mike would look great in it. And it'd be pretty tight on me, I think. <laughs> That's a bad <laughs> That's thing. That's fine. <laughs> Let's do another one here. And actually, we're going to go to a special place. Are the two of you ready? Well, yeah. We're going to Devorus Corner. Okay. For the Who's next divorce? For the next four <laughs> blinds, it's all going to have a theme here. Okay. Oh, the next four right. blind items are all going to have a little Devorus theme to it. Let's start with this first one as we take a trip on Devorus Corner. This A-list actress, since she was young, is relaunching herself as single since her divorce from a longtime partner. It's all part of the plan, as well as the revealing of her man that she's secretly been with for the past year or so. Oh. So we've got an A-list actress since she was young, relaunching herself as single, and uh, she a part of this plan is also going to be unveiling her man who she's secretly been with for the last year. You know who this is, Don? Valerie Bertinelli? Yes! Oh. That's how old we are. We I said thought Valerie it was Valerie Bernelli. Bernelli because her man, she just went public with him. No, nope. Don't wait. It's going to be one of the other blinds. Oh, okay. okay go on. Oh. A-list actress since she was young is relaunching herself as single since her sure divorce with a longtime partner. It's all a part of the plan as she will soon be revealing the man she's secretly been with for the last year or so. So she hasn't done that reveal yet. Mm, Drew Barrymore. That's a really good blind. A-list really actor. But I will say, if she has truly been with this individual for a year or so, it would be more controversial due to timeline issues. Oh. Where Drew's been single for a, a while. Okay, or, yeah. Kelly Clarkson? Nope. Since she was younger. She was, was she a young. child star? Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Mm. Like child star actress? Yep. Demi Lovato? And, I, and when I say A-list actress since she was young, she was A-list as a youngster. Oh. Shirley Temple Black. Uh, no. <laughs> um, let's see. Um, Candace Cameron Bure. Uh, Sorry. A-list not... actor. Why since did she, she was apologize young. for Candace Cameron Because I don't Bure. really want to say her name at all. Just please don't apologize for her. She needs to. Uh, well, okay. Um, <laughs> yeah. Moving on. Um, let's see. <laughs> Uh, was she on a sitcom? Uh, oh, she was a movie star. Natalie Portman. Oh, you got it. Yay. You got there. Nicely done. This A-lister since she was young. Natalie Portman is relaunching herself as single following her divorce from her partner, of course, Benjamin. I know it's not, but we say Millipede around here. Yeah. Uh, it's all a part of the plan yeah. as she will soon be unveiling the man she's secretly been with for the last year or so. So according, to, yeah, according to the blind item, she's definitely been seeing somebody else for a while and we are soon to get introduced to that individual. Oh, okay. I can't wait to see who it is. I hope mm -hmm. it's somebody that's hot and sexy and talented. <laughs> what? Okay. Just seems like she you're is. Really, are you really that excited I love about her. It? I think she's... Do you really? I yeah, I really do think she's Why? an amazing actress. Um, I loved, I thought that she was a great little kid actress in The Professional, even though looking back, the movie was kind of creepy. Um, I loved her as Queen Amidala. I loved her in Black Swan. I loved her in May, December. Well, that makes me And a lot of other things. I can't wait for her to unveil her ugly, untalented, oh. nasty partner that okay, she's been with Carol, for the last Carol. year. Oh, Carol. <laughs> Let's do another one here. Again, we're staying on Divorce Corner. We're going to move yes. to this one. How about an A-plus list actor continues to shovel money into the battle with his ex? He knows he's going to have enough, and she is continually trying to dig up cash wherever she can find it. If it's oh. or It now is truly just a matter of pride. If it was all about money, she would have quit a long time ago. Is that oh. Brad and Angelina? You nailed it. Yes, Brad and Angelina. The answer to that one. Uh, I will fill in the blanks here. Uh, Brad Pitt is uh, continuing to shovel money into the battle with his ex, Angelina Jolie. He knows that uh, he'll have enough money to keep that uh, lawsuit train going where she will not. If it's a matter of pride or it is now a matter of pride. If it was about money, she would have quit a long time ago. You know what's interesting? Like, I totally think that's valid and or not valid in terms of the actual like reasoning i'm just saying mm -hmm. it, that that blind item sounds genuine to me and i also have been reflecting on the fact that at what point do you as a person say this has been enough 
I because know. I am not going to get the resolution that I want. Oh. And this is going to, it surely has to be affecting her mental health, oh. physical health, daily life. Now, that might be a cost that's not too great for her. And uh, the same you could ask of Brad Pitt. But I just, it makes me sad that all of this gross information about him has come out mm-hmm. to really no effect right? in terms of his public career. That's People right. don't seem to be bothered at all because no. I think they've made the calculation that he is sober now. All of that other stuff gets wiped away yeah, and he can, you know, proceed forward because he is not perceived as being um, vindictive or vengeful. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And all that really makes me sad. And I'm sure she's really ticked about it. But at what point I would say, do you just say, okay, well, well, I let all of that out of the bag. I mean, I got everything I needed to get out and um, he's not going to give me what I want. I don't know. Yeah. Well, you know, maybe his career, we don't know yet. Like Quentin Tarantino just dumped the project that he was working on. Yeah, I don't think that was because of him, though. Uh, but maybe it is. Maybe people were like, you don't want to be associated with him right now. I maybe. mean, I think it has a lot more to do with Quentin Tarantino just being yeah. indecisive. Yeah. But Brad Pitt was attached to that. That. um last movie but i don't know i think that it was easy for me before i knew all the stuff to say she's just kind of really is a vindictive person and won't let things go and she's holding him hostage just for spite but now that i know that he physically abused her Oh boy. I'm like, gosh, I know that's now what I'm saying. where all like, the trauma comes she's from. She's put that all out there and yeah. it has had no effect on his career. Yeah. I mean, arguably, I would say, like, if you went on the street and asked the average person what they thought of Brad Pitt, I don't think that that's the story that would first come to mind. Even if they know the story about him in the airport um, and the way, you know, he allegedly assaulted his own child. But I think they've just made the calculation like, oh, didn't he apologize for all that? And yeah. he got sober now, so yeah. it's fine. And I'm not saying it's, Like, you don't have to, it doesn't matter what your opinion about the actual issue is. It's about at what point do you as a person say, I need to move this direction instead of back here. Yeah. And to your point, he was actually an executive producer of Three Body Problem. Oh. He also has eight projects in the works, including being executive producer for Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, and also his Formula One racing movie as well. So he has got a lot in the works. I think is. And he's, yeah. And he's also very much financing these projects so he very much is calling the shots yeah you know and again continues to make a ton of money off of these so money 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 it's gross let's do another one here as uh, we're going to continue our walk down uh divorce road or whatever we call it divorce corner sure we'll go with that divorce alley there we go divorce alley i like that (laughs) uh the ex of this a-list singer slash host should listen to the last blind and take some advice there is no way he is going to beat her in court, even if he is right. So he needs to just accept the judgment and move on. A-list singer host? The ex of this A-list singer slash host. Uh, oh, it's a female. Mm-hmm. Should listen to the last blind and take some advice. The ex should. Oh. There is no way he is going to beat her in court, even if he is right. So he needs to accept the judgment and just move on. Is this Kelly Clarkson and Brandon Blackstock? Yeah. Yes, it is. is or, I didn't know he had anything lingering. He So he, she came back at him with a big lawsuit um, last month. Oh, and now okay. he has fought back saying that she didn't appeal in time. And there's all of this legal issues going back and forth so he's still trying to fight to get more money from her on a monthly basis okay yeah and she's like over my dead body oh that's right we did talk about that but then now since we talked about that now literally i think just yesterday he has fought back and said no 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 you didn't do this appeal quick enough oh sure so like it's gosh it didn't like it you don't have the ability to file this yeah yeah again the only people getting money off of all of these stories are the lawyers lawyers well that's what i mean think about all of the money that Brad and Angelina have spent on lawyers over the past eight years or whatever it's been. It's a lot. They're all going to college. They're just like, our kids are going to have a future. (laughs) That's right. Thank you. Yeah. We got one final stop on Divorce Alley. Ooh. Let's check in on this couple. The wife of this A list actor has always been there for him, but has decided to start making plans to break away and has been looking at new houses to move in with with their kids. Wife of, an A-list actor. wife of an A-list actor has always been there for him, but has decided to start making plans to break away and look for a new place for her 
and the kids. This isn't Jada Pinkett Smith, is it? Okay. Wife of an A-list actor. Is she famous? Like, do we know her? Yep. She's an actress. Um, let me do a little bit of uh, research here because I so not uh, a well-known, well, not a well-known yeah. actress. Okay. No, that's fine. No, uh, not an actress. Mm. Is he like a superhero? He is not a superhero. Have we talked about there being trouble in Paradis? Uh, not really. I think the first part of the blind is pretty true to form, where she has always been by his side, mm. no matter what he is going through. So, does he have a bad reputation or a Re weird? Yes. Okay. Especially recently. Oh, okay, so we've talked about, about a very him. specific thing. Is it connected to? It's connected is, to a very specific Sean situation. Puff, did he come? No. Oh. Is it? Uh, Jessica Beale and Justin Timberlake? Nope. Okay. It's not about um that sort of stuff. It's not about, not about P. Diddy situation. Oh, it's not okay. gross. It's more of a sexual. Yeah, not not a sexual thing. Okay. So drugs. Not drugs. <laughs> Tax evasion. Nope. Crime Calling people ugly. It's criming adjacent. Gambling? No, but we'll stick with it. It was a crime situation. There's still crime. legal issues around it. Crime. Hmm. Is Who's it, crime? Was this like a, a DUI or nope. okay. murder for hire? Unfortunately, there was a tragic loss oh. in this story. Okay. Um. Oh, that's awkward. Um, no, not, I mean, you didn't. Okay. Yeah, we're, we're going through we're trying we're to find it. God, all I can think of is OJ right now. That's More okay. recent than that. More recent. Yeah. Oh, a leak of Taylor Swift proportions. No. Sorry. Okay. Um, so there was a was it a concert situation nope. where somebody was hurt? Okay. He's an actor. He is an actor. Okay. And he has a wife. He's done a lot of other things, including acting. He's a I wouldn't even say mostly yeah, mostly TV. No, he's everything. He's done, done TV, everything. done movies. He's done everything. It's not music? Chris Hemsworth. Nope. Okay. Not done music. I okay. meant everything from an acting standpoint. Okay, sure. Uh, let's see. Including hosting a game show. Oh, yes. We just Aaron talked about Rogers? him. No, he's not an actor. What am I talking about? A-list oh, actor. Travis Kelsey. Because um, he's doing that oh, yeah. show. Are nope. you smarter than a celebrity? He's part of an acting family. Oh, Okay. In a game show. Oh. It's part of an acting family, Pat Sajak. No. <laughs> A-list actor, Pat Sajak. <laughs> a -list. And all of his A-list acting his hair. siblings. Family, you know, Bob Sajak, Jenny Sajak. He's got a bunch of brothers that are lower on the list that also act. Jonas. No. Oh. And it's not a Chris Hemsworth. Oh, Baldwin. No. Alex. Oh, oh, hilarious. Oh, come on. According to the blind items, <laughs> Hilaria is, uh, who's always been by Alec Baldwin's side, no matter what he is particularly going for or going through, has decided to start making plans to break away from him and looking to get a new house to move in with, with their children. There How do you say children. divorce? Oh, cucumber. <laughs> <laughs> I I don't know about that. That one smells kind of funny to me. This seems weird. Because they are, what is she, if not? She wife is someone who will get a lot mother. of child support. Well, that oh, is for and alimony. That? Like what? Ha eight kids? Well, like, it, seriously, seven. seven. It would behoove Alec to keep her close because that would be I mean, very just, expensive. Just, yeah, I don't know. I feel like there's such a united Unless front. Unless he goes to jail. That's well, true. It's possible as well, yeah. Maybe she's trying, maybe they have some type of an arrangement where they're like, if you divorce me now before I go to jail, it's better for you in the long run because of my legal fees. I don't know. Those are all great questions, Dawn. We don't have no time, time to answer them. However, we will address more blind items tomorrow in this very special episode of a very special podcast it's blinded by the item we do it every day like and subscribe tell all your friends about it we even have a youtube channel by the way if you're watching we know you love us so Hi. please subscribe and tell all your friends about blinded, blinded by, by the, the item, item. Bye. Bye. It's